Hello, John Vallo. Hello, Lilu. <laughs> exciting, exciting to be speaking with you again. Oh, my goodness. It's really good to be speaking with you again, too. I, I see you're doing great in the world, and I'm really happy for you. Well, thank you so much. And I just came back actually from Mexico, from Yucatan. And so this conversation is absolutely perfect with all the okay. elders and the ancestors I was meeting. And intuitively, I do feel like a lot of people all around the world that this is a new, you know, new earth, a new humanity. Over there, we spoke of Mayan consciousness. You speak of of, of, of this of this new level of humanity coming in or, or entering. You're going to tell us more about that. But I'm thrilled because it feels right to connect with our ancestors. It feels right to connect with our origins and, and, and to learn from them. And I would love to start this conversation because, of course, we're going to speak of your latest book, which is The Following of the Serpent of Light, a bestseller. And this one is called the Mayan Ouroboros. I have here the, 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 the French version. And I was thrilled to, to read it, especially with everything that I heard over there in Yucatan in Mexico. So thank you, Dron Valo, for being available to have this conversation right now. What a perfect timing. Oh, well, you're welcome. I, I, I want to be here. It's, it's, I'm, this is great. Awesome. So, you know, of course, everybody has heard of the 21st of December and all of that. And I know we're going to speak of the positive side of the Mayan prophecy. And, but most importantly, this, this new cycle, this new consciousness. And I would love to start with the, the ancestors, because you see the ancestors as really bridging and bringing in the information. Actually, we're quite not retarded, but we're a little bit behind of time, aren't we, compared to these people that, that maybe walk in the dust, but actually have a lot of knowledge to share with us. It isn't actually that we're behind them. Uh, on one level, we're ahead of them. We're, we've taken a different DNA, and we've headed in another direction. And, uh, and, and, and in my work with the sacred geometry, you can actually see what we've done. The, the ancestors, when you look at the consciousness, uh, sacred geometry around consciousness, you can actually see in the geometry the various stages of consciousness, the ones we're in now and the ones way into the future. You can actually look at them and see and see what they're like. And, uh, and so the very first one, when we come into human consciousness, that that is uh, that's the one that Leonardo da Vinci created. Uh, he actually he didn't create it. Uh, it was it was coming from his mentor Vitruvius, uh, who was much older, and uh, and so they knew about this also. They had worked out the same things that that I had eventually found redoing the same things all over again, and uh, and so we are. And that first level uh, is um, it's all about being close to the golden mean. Whenever the golden mean happens, that's when life appears. And so, uh, and then this is all about the, the circle and the square. And when, the, when the, square, the perimeter of the square and the circumference of the circle are equal, that is the golden mean. And, uh, and so they, 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 as, they, as they keep going out and expanding out, the circle and the squares meet every once in a while, and you measure them, and one is a little bit under and then the next time they'll be a little bit over and they but they keep getting closer and closer to this golden mean the first one the aboriginals in australia and the waitaha and the kogi and the arawakos and these kinds of indigenous people uh, they are of the first level and the reason that they've been here for so long is because they are in tune with nature they are almost perfectly in tune with the golden mean then when you come to our level uh, which is a, they're an 8 by 10. It's hard to explain that, but we're a, a 10 by 12. And in the 10 by 12 that, that comes out of Vitruvius' drawing, uh, we are close to the golden mean, but not as close as they are. We, we are actually farther away. And, and because we're farther away, we're not in tune with nature. We're a, we, we are like a stepping stone. Yeah, like in the, if you take a river in the middle of a river and you put a stone in the middle of the river, and the, one side is the harmonic na in nature, that's the old the an ancestors, and then where we're going, whether you call it Christ consciousness or unity consciousness, whatever, this next level of consciousness, that one's even closer to the golden mean. But we are in the middle and we're not. And so we, are we contain the ancient ones, and our geometries contain them and they contain us. We're linked together. But we are, we are really 
outside of nature and we're supposed to step on that stepping stone and jump to the other side as soon as possible because if we stay there we will kill anything we're on. We'll kill this whole planet. We're not in tune with nature. We don't even care about nature. We're not, we, don't, we don't have it in us. We're not there. And so, uh, so that's what's going on. We're, we're in, an, we're in a, uh, an in-between stage of consciousness that but goes up. But they're saying it's a good thing because technology, when, when technology is that advanced in a, well, technology as we have it, that means that the next level is actually the, the, the right one, no? Isn't that what the Mayan are saying? Well, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, uh, the technology is an outcome of our level of consciousness. Uh, we're going to throw it all away really soon. We're going to take every single tiny bit of our technology and throw it in the garbage can because we're going to realize when we get to the other side that we can do all that stuff without technology. Mm -hmm. We can do it from within our hearts, within our own selves, uh, and, and we don't need uh, anything like that anymore. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so the whole package of, of humankind right now is simply a temporary stage. And that's all it is. And if you understand that, then you understand why all the problems that are going on in the world and the wars and all the craziness and everything else. Because we don't care. We're not there. We're not in, we're not in tune with nature at all. But, but this process is absolutely required. You have to go from this stage, the ancestral stage, to us, to the next stage. You can't get there going straight from the ancestral stage to the next level. There's no way. You have to pass through this crazy place. But at the same time, the ancestors can't get there without us. They need us. They need mm. to combine us with them. And we can't get there without them. Mm. We have to combine what their understanding is with us. And when we both come together uh, at that moment, that's when we have the knowledge that allows us to make this jump to the other side, and we and they come with us, not only us, but uh, and not only the living ancestors, but you know the, the people that we can recognize, the Kogi, etc. But these millions and mil hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of other beings that are are the ancestors that have died a long time ago, but they're still alive, and they're just waiting for us to make this transition so that they too can make this transition. So part of making this transition is breaking that silence since the 22nd of December 2012, this new cycle starting. The Mayans really want to reveal some things. What are those things that you found out? Because you did so many trips, well, so many, well, you have such an understanding that please tell us what are they revealing now that we don't know? Well, the second part of their, uh, of their uh, prophecy has never really been explained to the world. They only talked about the first part, and that goes to the, pre well, they, they see it all through the, the, the Mayan long count, which is a 5,125-year approximately uh, uh, cycle, and five of those cycles make up the precession of the equinox, which is 25,625 years. That's, what it, that's the actual time of it, approximately. And so um, when you look at it in the precession, it's easier to see it in the precession, uh, there you, you've got a 25,625 year cycle. You cut it in half and half of that is the dark side of the cycle and that's when the males come in and they protect life. They protect humanity during that time and, as, and they have. They did a great job. They made it through. We've made all kinds of mistakes. We ran into walls at high speed. We did all kinds of things and, 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 and it's amazing we're alive but we did it. We got here. And, uh, and in the last 2,000 years uh, uh, the that male protection has become very convoluted and uh, self-serving, and this always happens. It's not that they did anything wrong. It's just that when it, after a certain length of time, it begins to it needs help, and in this case, the polarity shifts on December twenty second from male to female, and so when we are now in a female cycle, and she's just beginning to get into place where she remembers who she is. And, and the power that she has inside of her, which is just incredible. It's absolutely awesome. You know, females kind of think that they're just, uh, you know, just because of the way the men have dominated everything for so long, they're, they're, who they really are has not been allowed to really emerge. But uh, the female side is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And it is what is going to save humanity. It's not going to be the male saved humanity to this point. 
now we're in that point where we have to leap in the middle of the river, and it will be the females and the children too, both of them together, that will make that will bring us to this place where we uh, are able to make this incredible leap to another level of consciousness. And uh, it, this is exciting. I mean, it really is. I mean, this. Uh, uh, you sure we look into the world and it's just a complete mess everywhere, you know. And how are we going to? How are we going to possibly survive? But if you really understand the nature of the universe, uh, we not only will survive, we're going to thrive. We're going to go on beyond this and, and be uh, all these. This is going to be kind of like a bad dream at one point. We're going to remember it. We're going to remember who we were and what happened. But we're also going to know we're never going to do this again. <laughs> you know, and we're going to know how to, how to get out of here. Yeah, you, you you know about this. You're saying in your book that this is really the second time you're on this earth, and we have most of us been go coming back here thousands of times. Yeah, thousands of times. Uh, so, so you you have already this. Do you, do you feel that you have this balance, uh, masculine, feminine, or it's not even the question anymore? I've only had one male <laughs> life. I'm just do, completing my second male life. Uh, in the Egyptian terms, you're not human until you've had nine lives. Because on the first eight lives are on the tetrahedrons that are around your body that make up the Merkaba, there's eight points. And there's eight different ways that they can face. And they create eight different personalities over eight different lifetimes. And once you've made those eight personalities, then on the ninth lifetime, you are now a human being. And I'm not there yet. I'm not quite human. I'm, I'm learning how to be. And, uh, and I'm doing the best I can. I made a lot of mistakes. On my first time, I made so many mistakes, it was crazy. And I'm trying to correct those mistakes now and, and, and understand things. Because it must not always be easy, especially with the amount of people that are watching your videos and receiving your information and, and everything shifting and changing. You must receive also quite a lot of turbulences and it must be not always that easy, especially with this end of this cycle and now this new one. Oh, uh, there's been a lot of, uh, I mean, but I knew when I came here what I was getting into. It isn't as though I, I'm surprised or anything. I knew that this is a very difficult time for any race on a planet that is going through this. This is a difficult step. And we're going to come to another difficult step where there's five levels we have to reach before we can go on from uh, body forms. And uh, and on the, uh, on we're, so here we are with five of them. Well, on the, we're on the second one right now, we're heading for the third one, but on the fourth one we go into another disharmonic level that is required to jump, make that leap again, to get to this final one. And uh, so we're, we've, we've got more time to go here before we're really complete. But, uh, but this, is a, so this, is a lot of, this is a lot of cycles of change, of going through some things, and, and, and so what is your recommendation right now? to go ourselves through these through these changes because you speak a lot of heart centeredness and the Mayans speak a lot about that there's so much information it's all about the heart well not really all about the heart it's about the heart and its connection to the brain right now the heart and the brain are, are severed it, it's something that happened about 13,000 years ago and we are still trying to deal with it and we do. We, we're in position now to solve that forever. And it will happen this year. We, we knew that, I knew this as far back as uh, about, at least about 19, in the, in the early 70s, I knew that 2013 was the time when this change would take place. And uh, so, I mean, everybody was so into 2012, and I was basically, you know, no, no, it's not going to happen then. It's going to happen this year. This is more than likely, you know, this is totally up to Mother Earth. It's not up to you or me or anybody else. This is up to her. And, and she will be the one that will make the decisions as to exactly when we make this, this jump in consciousness. And, uh, and so, uh, and it has not occurred yet. Um, we still have about almost three years before the, before the end of the, of the end of time cycle, uh, a window that we're in. And so, uh, just because we're through December 21st and 22nd doesn't mean a thing. We haven't, we haven't reached that point yet where the Mayan, the Mayan prophecy actually begins. I mean, it, it's beginning in the sense that we are in the window, and that's part of the prophecy. And it's, and it's beginning in the sense that they know that this in this window is when we 
we humanity begins to make this extraordinary change within each person. Each one of us makes it inside of ourselves. This is not just, it is a planetary thing, but it's also a very individual uh, change. And, uh, and we're not going to be human much longer. We're, we're, we are about to proceed into higher levels of, of interpreting the one reality. And when we get to that place, uh, we're going to look back at, at the way we see things now and go, wow, that was... That was like a dream. That wasn't even uh, that wasn't even close. And but we had to go through there. It isn't something that we just wanted to or something. It, it, we had to. We had to do this. We had to go through all these wars. We had to do all this stuff. It was terrible, but uh, it was what it, we obviously had to do. It. We did it. You know, it, it's history now. Mm -hmm. Because on the on your website recently, there apparently there is the the new you're talking of April and May as some defining dates in this ascension. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, the thing about 2013 is that even though I I I did discuss this as far back as in the late 90s, actually, that uh, the date of of uh, February uh, 18th and 19th was the time what the minds felt would be internal changes began to take place in the planet and in the sun and in the galaxy mm. that that uh, that the, the the process actually is beginning it begins there not in us we are we are created from that we are created from the earth and from the sun and from the galaxy and and we are we are we are direct representatives of that and so the the the, the uh, So we're receiving at the same time, then emitting. Yes, we're receiving. And right now, uh, from the center of the galaxy, there is a pulse that is going directly to our sun. Uh, this is, and we're coming to the peak of solar cycle 24. And that, uh, that, the sun is sending out these huge magnetic pulses that go to our magnetic field and come inside of there and make changes within us, within our DNA. The, the the outer our mother and father mother, mommy earth and daddy sun and, and our grandmother earth and grandfather I mean center of galaxy they are making the changes with within them that are making the changes within us and uh, and so this is not a time to be afraid of the sun you know oh it's going to solar flares yeah. all these things you need to tune into it. You need to go into meditation when you feel these things and really link with it and see what it's doing to you. Feel the changes that are going inside of you because these are, these are positive effects that are, that are changing us from human to something greater. And, and, and the more you're connected to it and you can feel it, uh, the better it is. Uh, you know, I mean, when the solar flares are going on, I go outside and, and just hang out in the sun. And, and I know scientists are going, you're crazy, you shouldn't be doing that. Well... I don't think so. I think that it is the uh, uh, it is this direct connection to life that uh, I'm, I'm, I want to be wide open with my eyes. I want to be there. I want to feel it. I want to be part of it. I don't want to hide from it. Uh huh. And and so this this month, April, uh, May, two thousand thirteen. Okay. Well, say so. There were a lot of things that have come up all at once, and they're all peaking right now. And the first one is that the Mayans say that this is when it's beginning, in February, and, and sometime after this, they expect, relatively this year, that that was what they were expecting this to happen. They may be wrong, but that's what they expect. Well, take that into account, and then you take in what NASA is saying. And NASA has been saying for the last, uh, since 2009, that uh, these solar flares are more than likely going to reach a level that is going to trigger another Y2K beyond uh, one that way beyond what would have happened in 2000 to, and, it, and it'll be tr triggered in 2013 and uh, which is at the peak of the solar solar uh, uh, solar uh, cycle 24 and and that and when that hits if what they are saying to us and they're saying to the whole world they've announced this everywhere that this more than likely is going to shut down the internet shut down all the grids, and close off all the electrical circuits for the entire world, and we're going to go into blackness. And uh, shut down the financial systems, which also means all gasoline, oil, food, water, everything else, just gone. 
and and they're and they're saying that that will probably happen from anywhere from one month to nine months. That's a pretty big disaster if that happens. And so I'm just simply saying, okay, our country, our, our United States of America says this probably is going to happen. So we should take that seriously. Uh, England, uh, when they reviewed all of that information, uh, they didn't believe it at first. They thought, no, this cannot be. And when they researched it over a six-month period, they came back and said, okay, we agree with you. Uh, th th we are in a serious situation right now, and whatever we can do, we want to cooperate. Then Russia came in behind them and said, yes, that is, that, that is the first one, but there's seven more behind that. <laughs> that are even much, much bigger. And, and they came in and said what I believe really needs to be talked about. It isn't the catastrophes and the, and, the, and, the, and the huge change that's going on. It's the internal changes within us we need to focus on. And, uh, and Despite all of this happening. So it's related, but not really. We have to do have our own revolution we, kind of going on. We have to realize, okay, we are at this pinnacle point in time and history. And there are going to be changes, the likes of which, according to Russia, we cannot survive. They've stated this. They've stated this, and they've got over, uh, they've got over 50 of their major scientists behind them saying this is true. They said there's not one person who's going to survive what's going to go on over this year. But that's what they're telling us. And uh, uh, survive meaning your physical body. But if you understand where this is leading, that we're just moving in, the body is simply an image inside of your consciousness. The earth is, everything is. And if you really begin to understand the nature of what's going on here, we are simply moving up to another level where we, where we can perceive the one reality from a different, in a different way, from which everything is fine there. There's no problems. There's no war. Everybody cares about each other. It's a whole different level of existence, but you're still on Mother Earth. You're nowhere else. This is, we're going from the third dimension of Mother Earth to the fourth dimension of Mother Earth, from which we're going to heal all of our problems, solve every single one of our problems that we, that we now have here. They won't exist anymore. And we're going to be one living human consciousness, all of us. We're going to be cells in a larger body. And from there, we have lots of help. And I mean lots of help. The whole universe is behind us at this point. We have over 300,000 cultures, ET cultures that are here waiting for us on the fourth dimension to prepare us for, to under, so that we can understand what has happened, what's happening to us, and what's going on. And from there, we're about to make a journey that the world has never seen before. And this journey is something that minds do not understand. Do they, not? They, no, they only, they've been explained it, but it's so far above even their consciousness that they really don't understand it. That's why they don't talk about it a lot. It's because, it, it's not because it's, it isn't fearful, it's beautiful, but it's so outrageous that it goes beyond. Human consciousness can hardly accept the Mayan prophecy on the other side. It's too, just outrageous. They, uh, what, what happens is that we begin to understand something about the universe that we don't know now, even though uh, science is just beginning to kind of get that. They're beginning to understand that it doesn't exist in the way that we think it does. It exists inside of us, not external to us. And, uh, and, and even our body is simply part of that extension. It is not really there. We, 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 it, everything is nothing but consciousness, period. That's all it is. And we have learned how to make really good holographic images. <laughs> uh, the universe is a hologram. It's a program created by us. And, uh, and we're going to find out that we have zillions of other ones of these programs and other universes that are possible. We don't know this yet. We don't know any of these things. And we're, but we're going to be able to be free. We're no longer going to be quarantined under the earth. We're going to be able to be anywhere, anywhere at all, and be able to speak every language in existence and be able to talk and, 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 uh, and communicate in ways that we don't even know is there anymore. We, didn't know, we don't even know it exists. We're not going to be human any longer. We're going to be on another level of consciousness 
that many people here call Christ consciousness. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it is still just the beginning. It is not uh, the end point. How, how, how are you, uh, what kind of information are you receiving from the IT? You know, remember we spoke of those light beings back then? Are Pla you still doing plasma? Yeah. Oh, yeah.